Welcome to my study today. We're going to look at those two very useful words, might and may, which are modal verbs. I'll put a link to the rules for modal verbs below this video. At the end of the video, there is an exercise for you to practice. So let's get started. Supposing I ask the question, where is Peter? I can answer it like this. He may be in the garden. He might be at work. Sue might know. All these things are possibilities. Supposing I said, where will Peter be tomorrow? Well, I can actually use the same answers. He may be in the garden. He might be at work. Sue might know. If you put the adverb tomorrow after any of these, you'll see why. Sue might know tomorrow. He might be at work tomorrow and so on. We can also use may and might with the infinitive of the present continuous like this. He may or might be waiting at the station. Of course, the infinitive is to be waiting, but because this is a modal verb, we do not use the to. And we can use it with a future idea like this. He might or may, they're equal in this case, he might or may be waiting when we arrive. Now remember, arrive here is for a future idea. We don't say when we will arrive. We use the present tense to express a future idea. He might or may be waiting when we arrive. Here's a way of expressing possibility using the negative form of the verbs. He may not or he might not believe our story. There are other phrases we can substitute for might and may. How many people might be at the party? Well, I could say, are there likely to be many people there? Likely to be is a very useful little phrase in English, and it makes your English sound very good if you can use it. Another way of expressing this is to say, do you think there will be a lot of people at the party? So we do have alternatives to might and may. When we talk about possibility in the past, we use the auxiliary verb have. He may might have been in the shower when you called. This has the idea of perhaps, perhaps he was in the shower. There are some situations we have to take note of where we can't use may and might, we can only use might. Where a sentence is introduced by a past tense like this one, I knew, knew is past tense, we have to use might. I knew we might have to wait for the bus. And where uncertainty no longer exists. Look at this sentence. You shouldn't have eaten that apple. It might have been poisoned. Can't use may here. That's a strange situation, but let's think about it. If the apple had been poisoned, you probably would be dead. So it didn't happen. So there's no uncertainty. The apple was not poisoned. You shouldn't have eaten that apple. It might have been poisoned, but actually it wasn't. Might is very useful to use in conditional sentences. If you invited him, he might come. If you had lent him the money, you might never have got it back. But in this situation, you didn't lend him the money. It didn't happen, so we can use might. You might never have got it back. We can also substitute will and would in conditional sentences with may and might. If he sees you, he will stop. If he sees you, he may or he might stop. You may think that can and may are used equally for polite requests, but actually may is the better choice. Can I smoke in here? Well, actually you can, because all you need for possibility, remember, is a cigarette and some matches. But you may not, because it's against the law. So if the question were to be asked, may I smoke in here? No, you may not. 
May, might and could can be substituted for each other. Look at these sentences. John may, might or could be at work. It's all speculation, all possibilities. Peter may, might, could still be eating his lunch. The train may, might, could be delayed by the strike. But when we look at the question form, it's slightly different. I could say, might she still be waiting? Could she still be waiting? Might is getting a little old fashioned in modern English, but it's still used and you'll see it certainly in literature. Couldn't is very useful to form a question. Couldn't you do something about it? Couldn't you help me? It's a kind of suggestion in a question form and it's very common in English to ask someone to help you or to do something by introducing the sentence with couldn't. Couldn't you do something about it? The negative forms do have slightly different meanings. Anne might not have seen John yesterday. That's a kind of speculation. Did she see him? Didn't she see him? We don't really know. But if we say Anne couldn't have seen John, we're expressing an impossibility. She couldn't have seen him because he is in France. So, before we look at the exercises, could I ask you to subscribe, like below and ring that bell. Complete the sentences with may, might, could or their negatives. The answers follow. Next time, we'll have a look at the modal verbs ought and should. So thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.